Hello, massage friends. I want to talk to you today about a very serious issue within our profession. A few serious issues, in fact. Human trafficking, prostitution, sexual solicitation, and sexual harassment. I wanted to address this because back in the beginning, when I started USOLMT in 2020, human trafficking was the first issue that I looked at within our profession. And I did a lot of research. I held a human trafficking focus group. We had a little over 40 massage therapists participate in that group. Um, we provided and shared research with each other. I met with the strategic director of the Polaris project. I talked to him about a joint project between USO LMT and the Polaris project. And they were willing to work with us on a anti-human trafficking campaign. And then I met with Deb Kemet of LMT Body Politic, who offered a completely different view of massage establishment licensing and how it harms us as a profession. I think that Deb is right. I wanted to share with you the information that we compiled into our human trafficking course. And this course is available to our members. Um, it has not been made public, but I'm gonna share it with you now because I believe that it's really important to differentiate what we're looking at when we are looking at these issues in massage therapy to understand what they actually are and to look at all of the research um, and all of the information that's out there. So. I'm going to give it to you. At least if you're going to work on tackling the problems, understand what they are, and look at some other charitable organizations that are working on the project besides the Polaris project. So let me share my screen and I will take you through this human trafficking course. Now, a lot of this is just compiled information, but some of this is content that we looked at through our focus group. Now, the first thing that's in here is a video that is public on our YouTube channel. It's called Untangling Trafficking and Massage. Deb Kimmett and I did this together. Um, so we talked about massage business regulation and how it harms us as a profession by using language that ties us to the sex trade. Um, Anything like massage therapists shouldn't wear lingerie. Well, duh, right? Why do we need to put that in regulation? When we do that, it just ties us to the sex trade as if we're going to be wearing lingerie. So when we look at rules and regulations, we really need to start talking about getting this language out of it and really talk about what the actual legitimate practice of massage therapy looks like instead of saying stuff like, you know, the massage therapist shouldn't wear lingerie or massage therapists shouldn't engage in sex with their clients. We know that. <laughs> we know that it's part of our profession. We are here to protect the public. We are here to uplift people. We are here to help them with issues that they're experiencing in their bodies. We're here to help them feel comfortable, not to make them feel uncomfortable. So one of the things that I put into this. There are also these human trafficking posters in here. These are posters that are required in the state of Florida to be inside the massage room. Um, I'm gonna show you what one of these looks like. So this poster is required to be in massage rooms in the state of Florida. Um, it just says if you or someone you know is being forced to engage in an activity and can't leave, um, whether it's prostitution, housework, farm, farm work, retail work, uh, restaurant, or any other activity called the National Human Trafficking Center. Um, these are meant to be in legitimate massage therapy businesses. I don't know how it's regulated when a business is operating under the guise of massage therapy, a sexually oriented business. Do you think they're going to put this poster in there? I mean, probably not, right? So, and where is the enforcement to stop 
that from happening? Where's the enforcement to say this poster needs to be in um, any uh, sexually oriented business as well as legitimate massage businesses? They're regulating us, but they're not actually enforcing the fact that this should also be in other types of businesses that operate under the guise of massage therapy. And then here, this is a PowerPoint that I created based on our human trafficking course um, and our, our focus group. <clears throat> so some of the things that I wanna talk about are separating from traffickers, separating from prostitution. Um, the first thing is really understanding and changing current legislation. The, the second thing is learning about sexual solicitation, sexual harassment, and sexual assault training. And the third would be learning about victim assistance and how these victims get out of these situations. So we need to differentiate this though, because <clears throat> human trafficking is trafficking that is actually using force, violence, or threats. It's fraud. It's deceitful recruitment practices. It is debt accumulation. It's coercion, emotional manipulation, document confiscation, threats of police deportation, exposure, shaming, and consequences to the family of the victim. That's human trafficking. There's also labor trafficking and sex trafficking. So there are a couple different types of things happening here. Um, in some cases, it's just somebody who is brought here from another country and they are being forced to work, to work off a debt. And then there are other situations where women are brought here from other countries or they are kidnapped and they are put into the sex trade. And it's not just that they're forced to work, but they're also forced to provide sexual acts under businesses that are disguised as massage therapy. And these are sexually oriented businesses. Now, prostitution is different. That is the performance of any sexual act in exchange for money. So anytime that you are being groomed by a client um, to provide sexual acts, anytime that you're being asked by a client to provide sexual acts, if you do that and you are exchanging money, that is prostitution. And you can be prosecuted for prostitution. In fact, a lot of human trafficking victims um, who are put into the sex trade when a case is discovered and prosecuted, the perpetrator will tend to get off easier than the women who are victims of this issue um, because they get charged with prostitution and then they have more of an issue than the actual perpetrator of the problem. We saw it with um, celebrities, Robert Kraft, for example, go back and look at that case. Um, the women who provided services to him at Orchid Day Spa in Florida were prosecuted and he was not. And then when we look at sexual solicitation, that's something else, okay? This is what Respect Massage was intended to do um, to curb the problem of sexual solicitation in our industry. The sex sexual solicitation is the act and intent to purchase sexual related acts from another person. So this is where we talk about sex buyers. Um, these are the people that are texting you, asking you if you do happy endings, if you do full body rubs. Um, these are people that pull off their draping on your massage table or ask for sexual acts inside the treatment room. So that's what sexual solicitation is. And then we also have an issue with sexual harassment and we have an issue with sexual assault. Um, so sexual harassment is the request of sexual favors, unwanted sexual advances, or other verbal or physical harassment in the workplace. And it is covered by the EEOC. Um, there is a, a nonprofit called RAIN that has a lot of information on sexual harassment um, inside the workplace. And in our workplace, when a, when a massage therapist does something that is sexual in nature to a client or even to a coworker, that is sexual harassment. And then there's sexual assault. And that's the issue of massage therapists touching people inappropriately on their tables. So we need to talk about current legislation. 
check your local massage laws, check your citywide massage ordinances, check your massage establishment license laws, read the current statutes and the rules that you are working under and notice any language in the ordinances or the statutes or the laws that reference prostitution or reference code for adult businesses. Um, if there is any overt language in there that ties you into the sex trade, then you should petition to get that taken out of the languaging. Um, contact other massage therapists, contact other massage businesses in your area, present your findings to them. Um, you can collectively petition city councils, uh, local and state officials, and, and your governing boards to propose changes that actually reflect the legitimate practice of massage therapy without language that ties you into the sex industry. And that, you know, one massage therapist is it's very difficult to make change with just one person. So this is part of the collective action that you can take with other therapists in your local area or in your state and get together and work together to help solve this problem. You know, a lot of massage therapists think that the, the sex trade should be legalized. And you know, in some ways it sounds good, right? Like it sounds like if we legalize the sex trade, then we uncover the businesses, they can take off their massage sign and they'll leave us alone. Um, but there are also some issues with that. First of all, I think we need to ask, does the sex trade want to be legalized? And I don't think that it does. I really don't think that it does. Um, I don't think that a lot of sex workers want to be legalized. I think they want to be decriminalized. Um, I think that they don't want to get in trouble for the things that they're doing. Um, but I, I really don't think that they want to be legalized. And if you, as a massage therapist, want to legalize the sex trade, you're going to have to have the support of the sex workers to actually make that happen. And I'm not sure that you're going to get that. Um, I'm also not sure that they're going to work with you. So um, something to think about going forward. Also, the other thing that you can do is actually advocate for legal changes. You can advocate for prosecution of sex buyers. You can advocate for investigation of sexual solicitation via online platforms, phone, text messages. One of the things that we did um, back at the beginning of USOLMT, after I met with Joyce from Respect Massage, her and I had several meetings. Um, we met about my meeting with the Polaris Project. We talked about um, how we could help and support each other. And one of the things that I was looking into was how do we create a reporting system where massage therapists can actually report um, any instances of solicitation, whether it's in the treatment room, by phone, or by text. We spoke to an attorney about it. Um, we spent the money. We, we did it. And the attorney advised us against it because he said that if we tried to do that, then we're essentially blacklisting people. Um, and one of the reasons why I brought that up is because I would, I would see massage therapists posting phone numbers of people who were asking for sexual favors via text message or via phone in Facebook groups. And that's not the proper place to actually do that. Um, I looked into a system that sex workers were using and it's called SAFE. Um, and they don't use it in the United States, but it's uh, used very often in the UK. SAFE is a database where you can put in a phone number of, um, you know, a John or a pimp that might be calling you or is violent or has perpetrated a problem for you as a sex worker. The phone numbers are masked, so they put in numbers like 000 and then the phone number. Um, and anybody can go through and search these numbers in this database. And everybody who has access to the database knows the masking code. Um, they also have a place where they can leave comments. We looked at doing something like that too. Um, but again, <clears throat> it's a liability issue. And we also thought about 
doing a simple Google form where massage therapists could report this. Um, I called a company called Callisto. Callisto makes software um, that is used at college campuses. And when there is a rape or there is an issue on campus, um, a student can report that issue into the database. They can report it anonymously. Their name is not tied to it. And then if there is another report with the same number or the same name, then there is an alert that happens to the victims who reported it. And that alert also automatically gets sent to law enforcement. Something like that, I believe would be great for our profession. Um, but I believe that law enforcement has to actually take the lead on that program because I don't know that we as a profession can actually make that happen without some huge liability issues for us. Um, now, the prosecution of sex buyers. There is a company, um, a nonprofit called Demand Abolition. There is a link to it on the USO LMT website under our charity pages. You can go take a look. Demand Abolition has tons of research on sex buyers, um, what their behaviors are, um, what kind of sex they buy, how often that they do it. Um, anybody interested in this or the profile of a sex buyer should go take a look at that information. Um, they have full reports, 45 pages of information about the profile of sex buyers. Um, another thing you could do, state laws that regulate any place of business where a massage therapist works under a healthcare classification rather than personal services or adult services. Um, if we are regulated under a healthcare classification, I feel like this, pro this problem gets a little bit better um, because we are held to a different standard when we are healthcare rather than personal services or adult services. Also, there are 30% of cities across America that still regulate massage therapy under adult service categories. Um, and this is something, again, massage therapists need to take a look at. How are you actually being regulated in your city? Some things that our lawyer, our attorney suggested Self-defense classes. Um, that is one thing that you can do to protect yourself from sexual assault or sexual harassment at work. Take self-defense classes, keep a panic button, use pepper spray, um, learn how to use a small taser, get other deterrents that are close by and get training on how to use them safely. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, but there are a lot of massage therapists that actually carry weapons on their person or in their rooms. Um, and when I say weapons, I, I mean guns. They carry handguns um, just to make sure that they are safe. And, you know, a lot of this stuff can be really dangerous. And I don't want to scare anybody out of doing massage therapy. But you really do need to be aware of the situation and all of these different things that you might encounter when you become a massage therapist. And a lot of this needs to be taught in school. And we say we don't have enough time in our education programs, but it's so important that we take the time to teach anybody coming into this profession how to deal with this stuff and to really understand what is going on. Uh, there was a joint statement issued by ABMP um, and AMTA about human trafficking. And I did not agree with this statement with you. But this statement was basically saying that the massage profession wasn't responsible for the problem, so we don't have to do anything about it. Um, and after the shootings in Atlanta last year, I released a, a press release. And I also wrote to the presidents of the MTA and ABMP. And, you know, there were a lot of stuff going on about that. Like Cal Cates came out with this thing like, oh, we're having the, all the wrong responses. Um, you know, they had just had Joyce with Respect Massage onto the ABMP podcast. And then when they didn't respond, I was like, to, I was like, women have just been shot at Asian massage parlors and now they are dead and we're not going to talk about this. No, <laughs> we need to talk about this because regardless of whether or not our profession is responsible for human trafficking, it's still an issue for us. Um, and 
it's not just trafficking, it's labor trafficking, it's prostitution, um, you know, it's, it's sexual harassment and it's sexual assault. And all these things are different, but they're all tied into the same thing and we cannot continue to ignore it. So I am happy to see that our profession, um, you know, in this joint task force of these uh, industry associations are doing something, um, you know, and anything is a good start. Not ignoring the problem is a great start to me. Um, there was also a human trafficking statement put out by um, NCB and TMB with the same thing. You know, they, they don't believe that it's part of our profession to fix the problem. And it isn't. It really isn't. I think there are a lot of massage therapists who feel for victims of human trafficking and they work with human trafficking organizations and they get involved. Um, and that's cool. That's, that's fine with them. Um, I do feel for any victim that has to be um, that has to be tied up with that. That's horrible. Nobody should have to be subjected to human trafficking or sex trafficking. That is insane. Um, and so, yes, I really do feel for those victims. But what I do not understand is how the massage profession continued to ignore the problem for so long. Um, and now the problem is really out of hand. Um, human trafficking is a really big issue in our country. Um, and the fact that our massage boards do not have any power, um, accreditation agencies don't have any power. They can't do anything about unregulated massage businesses. Um, I think that there are a lot of people who feel like they should be doing something, but they really can't. They have no jurisdiction over those types of businesses. The only person that has jurisdiction over those types of businesses is law enforcement um, or some sort of human trafficking agency in the state that law enforcement has designated to deal with the problem. Um, and so human trafficking, sexual solicitation, sexual harassment, assault in our industry has historically been downplayed. Um, and so I'm happy to see it in the spotlight because it needs to happen. Now, understanding the problem, when we look at this, the problem goes much deeper than the things that the Polaris Project has reported. The Polaris Project has state report cards. You can go on there and download your state report card um, and find out what your grade is. In Arizona, we are grade F. Um, there's a lot of movements of human traffickers in our state. Um, and it happens everywhere. It happens in the Midwest. It happens in places that you wouldn't expect, but it's everywhere. Um, and I think that their report cards are good. They also operate the National Human Trafficking Hotline. So if a person calls that hotline, they refer out to law enforcement in the state or they refer to a trafficking organization that takes care of it and handles victim assistance. Now, you should also look at Deb Kimmett's research. Um, she has talked about how understanding how establishment licensing can be problematic. And she's done tons of research into this. Um, and her stance, she basically picked apart the entire Polaris Project report about illicit massage businesses. And what Deb is saying is very important. And we need to look at that too. It can give you a different perspective. Um, and, you know, we also did this uh, human trafficking video. Her and I talked about establishment licensing together. So look at that too. And then look at demand abolition. Um, their whole stance is no buyers, no business. Um, if you want to know what the profile of a sex buyer is and you want to be aware of it and you want to be on the lookout for that in your massage practice, go read that report. Um, and then Catalyst did a, a report on sexual harassment in the workplace. And Catalyst, the Catalyst report is also very good. Take a look at that too. The federal response. So we have the Human Trafficking Prevention Act. We have the Blue Campaign by Homeland Security. There's the National ha Trafficking Hotline. There's the National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. All of these things are really important. The federal, you know, our federal government should be responding to this issue. That is their job. So let them do it. Um, there are also, you know, in our state, in Arizona, we have a human trafficking uh, coalition or group. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's actually run by Cindy McCain. Um, and 
there is an institute that's dealing with just this specific issue, which I've also tried to contact who did not contact me back. They prostitution. So I really want to get into this and talk about it. Understanding prostitution. Now, this is some stuff that I found out as we were doing our research. There are some different tiers of prostitution. Um, and it's really interesting. So tier one is like a mistress who actively solicits a man. They're paid by government officials, entrepreneurs, businessmen. A lot of them provide um, accommodation, regular allowance, cohabitation. These are like sugar babies, sugar daddies. Um, these are situations that are usually like college students, they're younger girls um, and older men, and they're bound by this monetary agreement. So that is one level of prostitution that's going on in our country right now. This could only, this could also be stuff like <clears throat> OnlyFans. Um, and if you don't know what that is, you should probably find out. Tier two, um, high priced escorts for a fixed time. Um, a lot of men will accompany escorts on business trips, vacations. Um, they're found at resorts and hotel rooms and spas. Uh, women usually receive a fixed payment for companionship. And a lot of people call this like rich people's rights, right? Rich people's rights. They have the right to um, hire an escort to be with them for some time. And I have worked at several resorts and I have actually seen this situation in action. Okay. Um, more than once. And it was disturbing to say the least. There's also tier three, women who solicit men at strip clubs, nightclubs, bars. Um, they may receive payment for touching, dancing with, drinking with men. Um, a lot of this stuff is like in club acts that might lead to fondling, groping, intercourse for money. Um, and then there's another tier and that's kind of like a, a doorbell girl, right? Like these people wait in bars or hotel lounges. They might phone in uh, rooms to hotels to solicit potential sex buyers. And then there's tier five. This is uh, stuff that happens in salons, massage establishments, wellness centers, barbershops, bathhouses, saunas, spa locker rooms. These services are performed for money under the guise of legitimate massage therapy. This is the problem. Um, they're solicited in spa locker rooms. They're sold in other locations that promote health and wellness. Um, and then there are lower tiers like, you know, street girls, um, people who are prostituting on the street, women who sell sex to migratory workers in the United States. So we need to really look at this and understand what these different tiers and these different levels are. Um, Tier five is really kind of like a more lower tier of the types of prostitution that happen within our country. And it doesn't happen really as often as you think it does under legitimate massage therapy. Um, and I think even in that Polaris report, it was like 9% of all of the businesses in the United States were sexually oriented or illicit massage businesses. Okay. Uh, should sex work be legal? Um, sex workers create their own networks of protection. This is the safe forum that I had talked about before. Um, there are issues with fighting STDs, aid epidemics among sex workers. Females have a lack of independent trade union support to actually push legislation through that would protect sex workers. And this is a big issue that has been brought up among sex workers and organizations that support them as the lack of independent trade union support to push legislation through that would actually protect them. Um, workers have little assistance with occupational health and safety issues from the workplace and the labor board and government agencies. And I will tell you right now that massage therapists are doing the exact same thing. They are working to try to create their own networks of protection. Um, there are issues in um, with the lack of trade union support to push legislation through that would protect massage therapists. Um, and also that they have, massage therapists have little assistance with um, OSHA health and safety issues. Um, and also from labor boards and government agencies and even law enforcement. Massage therapists do not have the support that they need to make something like this happen. Um, they don't even have this kind of support in their own industry. So how in the world are massage therapists going to get together and make sex work legal? I don't know. 
And then the last part of this is victim assistance. So we want to look at the companies that are actually uh, or the organizations that are supporting the victims and what they do. So there is a referral directory at the Polaris Project. There's a um, organization called Global, Global Modern Slavery that also has a directory of human trafficking assistance. Um, Hope for Justice has information on spotting the signs of human trafficking, which you can learn more about if you go there. And a lot of this is changing public perception. So I have supported Respect Massage since day one when I learned about it. Post the stickers on your doors and your windows, use the logo, um, use your marketing materials, explain what it is when people ask you. Um, have all of your clients sign a statement saying that sexual solicitation will not be tolerated with repercussions on the intake form. Tell them what you will do if they do that. Um, don't use red letters or red lighted signs on any of your marketing materials or around your location to avoid being tied to red light districts in your window. Um, do not put a neon sign that says massage on your window. Um, I don't know if you know, but just in the Phoenix area, there are like 250 Asian massage businesses and every single one of them uses a neon red sign. I'm not saying that those businesses are all sexually oriented businesses, but what we do know is that a lot of sexual oriented businesses are Asian run. Okay. Um, I am not being discriminatory when I say that. I'm just stating a fact. That is true. Um, and a lot of those businesses use the big red neon sign that says massage on the door. They also have blacked out windows. Um, a lot of it is kind of obvious to us. Um, and handing out, hanging a trafficking poster sign in your office. You know, if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. But I also think that that's kind of a bit much to require inside a massage, a legitimate massage practices office. And if you're not, if you're not going to police that inside the sexually oriented businesses, then why should you police it inside a legitimate massage therapist's office? Um, create an education handout about sexual language as it pertains to massage therapy. Um, and give that to your clients so you can educate the public. I mean, it needs to be done. If you want to make any change, any campaign like this needs to require public support. So educate your clients about it. Educate potential clients about it. Report every single text message. Every text message that you receive asking you for some sort of sexual favor, report it to the police. Every in-room incident, every act of sexual solicitation, sexual harassment, or sex buying, report it to the police. Stop covering it up. Stop acting like it's not a big deal. Report it every single time. And then maybe when law enforcement is actually inundated with our reports, they will see what a big problem it is that we're dealing with. Because it is a huge problem, and it has only gotten bigger over the last two years. Like, I'm not just making this stuff up. We are actually seeing this as a huge issue in our profession. And then you want to protect your business. Get security cameras for your location. Watch the front door. Watch the back door. Watch outside of your treatment room. You know, a lot of people <clears throat> um, working at franchises, they have to deal with cameras everywhere. They also have audio inside of their establishments. At least give yourself that protection inside your own business. Um, so that way, if there is an issue, you actually have camera footage. Keep your prices at least as high as market value. Lower prices attract more sexual solicitors. So the lower that you go in price, you want to give a massage for $45, $55, $65, you're going to attract more sexual solicitors to your business because the ones that actually do this price their massages at $25, $35. So keep your prices as high as market value. And when I say that, I mean, do not look at the member price of your local massage MV. You look at their non-member price and you start your prices at that price. Okay. That is the price that massage MV has decided that the market can bear. So put that price on your massage and do not take anything less. That will deter some of this from happening to you in your business. Consider eliminating tipping. Tips 
may be used to groom or coerce massage therapists into sexual acts by clients, especially in low paid workplaces. I talked about this in the USOLMT blog. I had a conversation with this with Michelle Cadero at ACES. It is recorded on the ACES Facebook page. Um, <clears throat> so if you're interested in looking at non-tipped business models, I would love to speak to you about that. Um, it's so important. Tipping gives clients power over us. It gives them the opportunity to groom us or coerce us into things that maybe we shouldn't be doing, like sexual acts um, and other things too, like working too hard. But this is a big issue in our industry. Keep your front door locked. I think in a lot of city codes, there are issues about keeping your front door locked. And why is beyond me. I really don't know because if you're a massage therapist and you're in private practice and it's just you, um, I think that it would be important to make sure that you had some protection from people just walking into your business or just walking into your massage room. That seems like a simple solution to the issue. Um, let people in as they come and go. Take self-defense classes. Um, again, keep a panic button, pepper spray, a small taser, or other insurance close by and get training on how to use those things safely. And the other thing that I think needs to happen here is that all of these issues need to be addressed simultaneously, all at the same time. Human trafficking is not the same thing as prostitution, which is not the same thing as sexual solicitation. It's not the same thing as sexual assault, but every single one of these issues is intertwined with each other. Um, human trafficking needs to be addressed locally. It needs to be addressed at the state level and it needs to be addressed at the national levels by staying informed and working to change laws that neg negatively impact your business by tying you in in the language and the rules and the regu regulations, by tying you into the sex industry. That's the solution to that problem is to eliminate that type of language. Um, also, addressing prostitution and massage therapy. If you see or you suspect prostitution or grooming or coercion by clients, say something. Report that to the business owner and report it to the police. Report unlicensed massage therapists who solicit sex from clients under the guise of massage therapy to your local police department. Don't report it to your state board. They don't have the resources to investigate it. Report it to the police. Report it to the police as soon as you suspect that this is happening and let them investigate. Report all instances of sexual solicitation online, by phone, by text, or in person. Report that to the police immediately. And a lot of local police departments actually have online reporting tools that you can use. So you can just go to their website and make a police report. Do it, learn how to do it. Actually make contact with your local law enforcement and talk to them about the issues that you might experience and find out the best way to actually report these problems um, and stop ignoring the fact that they are happening. Understand the profile of sex buyers and sexual solicitation so you can spot red flags. Always do thorough client screening prior to your appointments, immediately into session if it makes you feel uncomfortable and demand the full payment. Do not work for an employer that does not support this, ever. If your employer does not support the fact that you have the right to end a session when it makes you uncomfortable, leave, run away right now. Your employer should be required to respect that and also to back you up and, you know, I'm so glad that Congress ended forced arbitration in the workplace because a lot of our bigger businesses, corporations in our industry were using that and they were not, they were having people not report incidences to the police. Don't do that. Report everything to the police. If there is an issue, okay. Report any sexual harassment towards you from coworkers to management, the owner of your business. If you are getting sexually harassed at work, immediately in writing, report it. Report it to your management. Report it to your business owner. And if it happens from your business owner, report it to the police. Report it to the labor commission. Um, report it to the EEOC. And they will help you and follow up and get an investigation going. 
Protect yourself from sexual assault with tools and proper training. Report and press charges against anybody who assaults you through violent sexual means. Don't be the victim that doesn't do anything and ignores the problem and then just leaves it for the next person. Don't be that person. I mean, I understand how hard it is. I understand that when that happens to somebody, it's shameful. It is devastating. Very, very difficult for a victim to come forward. And they are courageous and amazing and wonderful when they do because it helps prevent it from happening to another person. And don't give inappropriate clients the benefit of the doubt ever. If you have a gut feeling or you have a hunch that a client is being inappropriate with you, even when they're being sneaky about it, even when they're, you know, when it's just like, oh, my client just held my hand for a little bit too long. My client just kept staring at me the whole time and it made me really uncomfortable. Don't give those people the benefit of the doubt. Do not take care of it. Take care of it immediately. Trust me, it's happened to me enough times in my career that after the first time it happened, I got very, very strict about what I would tolerate at work and what I wouldn't. Um, and I have also stood up for other massage therapists that had stuff like that happen to them at work um, and made sure that these clients were no longer allowed to come into our businesses. So there's no sense in tolerating any kind of inappropriate actions like that from clients. Now, listen to me. I'm going to actually put this stuff um, in the description box below. I'm going to give you the link to all of the information that I have compiled. Um, there are, there's a lot more to it than just this set of slides and these links. Um, there is the untangling human trafficking video that Deb and I did. There's these human trafficking posters you can take a look at that are required in the state of Florida. Um, there's information on here on a company called Operation Underground that does human trafficking victim assistance. So you can find out a little bit more about how that works. Um, and they're not the only one. That's just one. Um, it happens to operate in the state of Arizona. So I just put that in there kind of as an example. You can take a look at the previous report that the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards did here, their Human Trafficking Task Force report. Um, there is the report that Deb Kimmett did on untangling trafficking and massage. There are the Polaris Project reports. Um, and the ones that I put in here, they've done a ton of reports. Um, crisis in human trafficking, hiding in plain sight, street grace, illicit massage businesses, and then human trafficking in illicit massage businesses. Um, another piece of language that we need to stop. And all of those reports are there. How corporate secrecy facilitates human trafficking, which I thought was another interesting report that they did. Um, sex buyers. So the demand abolition reports on sex buyer profiles, that is also here you can download and take a look at. And then there's the um, sexual assault prevention and assistance. This is a, some information on Me Too and their COVID response toolkit. There is the sexual harassment um, in the workplace report from Catalyst. And I also added Cherie So and Mo's um, sexual assault prevention report in here for you to take a look at. So it's a lot of information, but if you're actually interested in helping to solve the problem, or you're actually interested in understanding the problem and wanting to work on this, I suggest going through all of this stuff. Um, go through it all, form your own opinion. You wanna talk about it? Let me know. Um, I am here. You can make a comment in the video below and I'll respond to you. You can send me an email at usolmt at gmail.com. Give me whatever uh, feedback that you have. I am happy to hear it. Um, and let's actually start to work on the problem in a way that benefits massage therapy and the legitimate practice of massage therapy. And when we consider solutions to the problem going forward, let's not repeat the same mistakes that have been made before in our profession. Let's actually keep a future focus on this um, and figure out how to make sure that this does not continue to happen in the future. I am Stephanie. I am the founder and executive director of USOLMT, and this is my TED Talk in Human Trafficking. Thanks for listening. <laughs>